The, 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 the dream is real. It is your lifestyle specialist, Kenny Burns, reporting live from Loveland, the safest place on earth. I truly wish you a Loveland in your lifetime. And I also wish you a number one and a number two. And today we're going to tackle that here on the Kenny Burns Show. But before we do, I want to <laughs> introduce my illustrious panel of superheroes. They are superheroes indeed because black women will save the planet. All right, yeah. Round of applause for uh, Kenya Coco Kendra. Woo! Woo! Hey. Yeah, she, she ain't even had no Prosecco, but we about to go-go, okay? All right, keep those round of applause going. You know what I'm saying? Because if you mess with her, you got to mess with me. Hey, Pier- on me. period. Dr. Sugar. Hey, hey, hey beautiful. Hey, 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 hey. Do it. Sorry, I was out of breath. Uh, Coco, can you Kendra had me? <laughs> uh, hyperventilating a little bit because she was talking <laughs> shit, y'all. Before we start the show, if y'all ever wonder why I was we laughing, the truth, though. yeah, okay, it's fine, it's the truth, but you won't say it now. I bet you won't say it now. <laughs> I will. I bet and you. I will. No, no, okay, Back well, don't. Day, well, well, don't, well, don't, well, don't, well, don't, well, don't, well, don't, no, 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 listen. <laughs> Listen. What you want to know? Okay. All right. Today's episode 55 is called <laughs> Love and Hip Hop. Kendra Need a Show. <laughs> <laughs> Love and Hip Hop St. Louis, aka Kansas City, on the way. Um, I you know, I, I just y'all inspired this conversation and, and along with Tiffany Hamilton Burns because ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you this love and hip hop generation, the way that they are growing up in hip hop or, or, or whatever this shit is called today, and then equating it to love, it just don't mix, y'all. It just don't yeah. mix, just like the shows, okay? Uh, seeing unhealthy uh, relationships all over the internet, it's just not good for our soul, but it's pouring into relationships. For the, mm. for the single uh, crew out there, I wanna say a little prayer for you. Uh, maybe buy our heads, please. Maybe bow our heads. Please close your eyes and bow your head. Uh, dear Lord, baby Jesus, I want to send covering and favor uh-huh. to those trying to find a significant other. Because well. the way that this um, <laughs> chlamydia rap is set up, it is not, it is not, uh, don't don't interrupt my prayer now. This chlam- The way this chlamydia rap is set up, it's not going to be healthy for them, Lord. I want them uh-uh. to find grace in their relationships. I want them to find a good partner that's going to share and not yes, take. Lord. You know, and not just gonna just be wanting to throw the ones on on this. You, you met it. I don't know where I was going with that, but you can't, Father God. Please protect them on their journeys into finding a significant <laughs> other. And let the church say, please, Amen, Amen. 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 Yeah, because it's just it's nasty. You don't, you don't like that prayer, sugar? Uh, you don't love it? I, I'm just praying for my. I'm praying because this love and hip hop. They thing do is need weird. prayer though. No, they, they do because cl- the, between the chlamydia rap, the ops, and then. The girls the don't herpes, need you know, nothing. You like saying herpes. You said what? <laughs> you somebody say herpes. You be like, attention. Who got herpes? Watch the lips. You can tell out here in these streets with the lips, ladies and gentlemen. No, we see yours. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Round of applause for Coco Kendra Kenya's herpes free mouth. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to. I had say, no I violence. Sign up for this. Yeah. <laughs> No, you you don't want putting your lips in the camera. I you know I just I want to start the conversation. Tiffany, can you put those statistics up for me? I want to read some statistics to y'all because I don't want nobody to be confused on why we are acting this way in 2023, about to go into 2024. Now, now y'all know it's about to be 2024. We can't keep sure. having you know this uh, uh-huh. malnutrition of the brain, ladies and gentlemen. You see the things that are making you act in the way that you acting. But if you don't believe me, let's just run some numbers because here on the Kenny Burns Show, we like to be actual and factual. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, according to the 2023 census at the national level, the unmarried sex ratio by race and Hispanic origin range from 79.8 for the black and African American alone population to 100.1 for the Hispanic population, which means black and brown people are the ones adversely impacted by this Mm. negative ideology being passed through music. Hold on. Round of applause for information, because see, ladies, this is actual and factual information. 
This is mm-hmm. this is from a, a, a reputable, reputable source. Reputable, come on here. You, you hear me with the words reputable Indeed. source, and so I'm I'm sharing with y'all this information because it's basically saying I will read the last portion of that, which means black and brown people are the ones adversely impacted by the negative ideology being passed through music, and you wonder why. Pound town, thugging with my round. My coochie pink, my booty hole brown. You know what I'm talking about? You wonder why. That's a visual now. So a child who has no idea other than their personal private part, getting ready to have sexual activity, want to have sex, their loins is loining, and then they go and they got to be super freaks before they even put it in. <laughs> they don't even know, they ain't even had intercourse. They have not released the things that come out of sexual activity into the, uh, what is it called? The pheromone sphere. I made that up, but it sounded good. So they gonna get this going and just had no, it sounded amazing to me. They just gonna go into the, the thing and thinking they gotta be all that. How do y'all feel about that? Because I'm reading from the census what they said. We've been saying it on TKBS, but I'm reading what the census said. They saying that the music seeping into your frontal lobe and it's causing you to have these issues. Dr. Sugar. So when I, I believe that we have to guard what we take in. So if we mm. keep taking in things that don't, that don't like mm. increase our ability to think clearly and think for ourselves and we're just um, thinking about what they're saying and only seeing what they're saying and then that becomes a part of our own mindset that's a problem within itself like when I was growing up I couldn't even turn the radio on on the way to on the way to school right my dad'd be like you don't need to fill your head up with all that mess on your way to school and I didn't get it right but now Mm -hmm. it's like okay sometimes it's okay to be in silence because you need to prepare your mind for what you really need to be filling it up with. Come on. Right. Come on. Dr. Dr. And, and, Dr. Sugar, you are The content be coming through wrong. Yes. I mean, even back in the day, the music was crazy. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, the music was crazy. So, like, you just got to be careful what you take in. No, no question. And I just did this uh, roundtable discussion, Rhapsody Beyond the Basement. And it's going viral. A lot of the things that I've been saying, obviously, I've been saying right here on the Kenny Burns Show. But the gangster thing is, and the gag is, is that it's true, sugar. Yeah, we used to have gangster rap, but it was a bird's eye view into the West Coast. If you hadn't lived on the West Coast or New York or or Miami yeah. or Houston. Houston or Atlanta and now it's just so overdone where it's become the majority I mean R&B is up for a reason right the streams in the 90s and early 2000s are up for a reason this music that is this bullshit that is being offered Mm -hmm. today that is is honestly affecting the way we love you know is down 40% and I actually said on Rap City Beyond the Basement as well like love is the thing that made hip hop special. Mm-hmm. Love is the thing that makes a relationship special. Love is love is mm-hmm. the key. So, um, Coco, Kenya, Kendra, how you feel about that? Because I feel like you're a little ratchet, right? But you educated. You know what I'm saying? So you like both sides of the thing. You know what I'm saying? How how is it? And you're not juggling nothing because you still married. You know what I'm saying? But how is the how is it? I mean, what are we doing? Talk to me. I don't know what they doing. Mm. Like. <laughs> For instance, like some of the stuff that they say nowadays, the girls are acting like men running around calling the dudes bro. And I've never seen women like call men bitches like they do today. Like it's It's nothing crazy. Like it's really crazy. But women call bitches bitches too, though. We can do that. that, I don't care. We can argue about that all day. I call my girlfriend bitches, but it's not like in a. No, you're right in an offensive way. It's just like, girl, bitch, bitch let me tell you what, it, that's what we do. But but maybe, so, but maybe though, because we talked about five things that we want to do as a community. And I'm I can, not stopping. That not, ain't my okay, thing. Okay, you chose not. I like saying, bitch, let me tell you what happened today. That's me. She said, she said that ain't one, two, three, four, or five. Yeah, it's not happening for you. <laughs> I'm going to okay. still say it. Got it. Now, but, got you it. Saw, but Kendra, let me, let me make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. Are you saying that women are degrading men by calling them that like that oh is that yeah what you're it's about? very degrading mm. it's very yeah. degrading and that's why a lot of men are so comfortable with calling women bitches now it's mm. like and it's normal to them you look at some of these reality shows because that is I my pleasure right. i do look at some of that right um and you look online and stuff like that and it's like 
normal for them to call they woman a bitch. Even in a rap lyric, they like, yeah, my bitch, or I'm his bitch. That is weird to me. No, like, and it's so regular, you're right. Do. It's so, No, hold on, but you're right. Because I'm catching myself saying it. Mm -hmm. I'm catching myself. And that's the other thing besides the N word. I'm, I'm trying to stop using the word B. Because I think I use it when someone acts like that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if mm -hmm. I even, uh, Jessica and I just had a conversation. It was like somebody said they laid on something and they said they need a couple more days. I'm like, why the bitch? And I was like, oop, I can't say that. Uh, I was like, well, why the woman, you know, or the man, or whatever the case may be, you know what I mean? But I think this, th but that's the thing I'm, I'm going so hard about the five things, y'all. Because these yeah. are little nuances, right? Because even though we are not listening to the sexy reds and the ops and the shoot 'em up, baby, the messaging is still sp spilling to us. It's still getting yeah. to us some kind of way. Whether it's a one off at the club, whether it's, yeah. a, you know what I'm saying? So we're still getting all of that energy. In the gym. And, and, and you know, in the, gym. Like the, the sounds on Instagram, you don't even realize what the song is, but you listen to it because it's on somebody's reel or if it's on somebody's story. And mm. it's like, OK, let me see what this. And then you be like, wait a minute, I can't I can't use that on my reel. Yeah. I'm not putting that on my reel. Yeah. No, I hear mm. you. I, I hear you. And I just think that we are in a place where people are ignoring the stats too like that's why I wanted to give you those stats you cannot think it's not brainwashing it's it's not ethnic cleansing on some level I don't know if you I don't know if you want to go that far but I'm that serious I mean Ooh, think man. about what it's doing to the youngest like think about what it's doing these people have no compassion you know I go into the barbershop I hate this shit Ron please stop it I go into the barbershop every time I go in there first 48 is on I can't stand it I can't stand it it drives me crazy and it's always these mysteries and a lot of them were about relationships and what happened after the relationship or, you know what I mean? And I'm like, love and hip hop, it's a real thing. Like this word love, we came up through generations adoring and feeling passionate mm -hmm. about things. Now mind you, we could all had dysfunction. There was dysfunctional lifestyle, all that, but there was some love somewhere in the thing. It was some mm -hmm. love for some creativity, a significant other, your mama, your daddy, you know, something. But I just feel like mm -hmm. the word love is getting lost in this new hip hop generation. I cannot disagree with you. Um, people don't know what love is. Mm. People know what love is, what they, what they perceive love to look like, but they don't Facts. know what it is. They don't know what the action is behind it. They know what the word is, but they don't know what the action is. And when you don't know mm -hmm. what the action is, you cannot be, you cannot exhibit love. You can't uh, be love. You cannot walk around being love, like giving love out wherever you are because right. you know what it is. You just know what it looks like. And see, that's the other thing. And that leads me to my next point. Bam, 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 when, bam. People like, when people are like, if you don't, if you don't propose to me under the Eiffel Tower, if you don't propose Child. to me with a hundred dozens of roses, if you don't give me bags and that girl, what? Do y'all have a house? Do you have any property? Do you have any investment? Do you have anything that you can leave to somebody where while you trying to get something clickable? Huh? Let me tell you something. If I ever get married. Please believe. I don't want no wedding. For what? Right. I don't need that. That feels to me like a waste of money. Yeah. To me. Yeah. It is. But if, if whoever, if you. whoever, <laughs> if whoever I marry wants that, then we could have a happy medium, whatever. But I ain't got to do that. We could buy a house. Yeah. Buy, buy a house. house you know. Go on a trip. I yeah, mean, I could do that. Yeah, go to Bora Bora, some that you know, one of your wildest dreams for what you was gonna spend Believe on that wedding. Me. But I want to tell you these ratios of unmarried men to women by age, and they mm. say that although the overall sex ratio for unmarried adults in the United States was about ninety men per one hundred women, the thirty to thirty-four Jeez. age group had the highest ratio at nearly one hundred and twenty-one men to a hundred women. This is likely due to men having a higher median age at first marriage, 30.1. The woman, 28.2. In other words, because men typically marry later, on average, there are more of them available to marry at younger ages. Mm -hmm. How do y'all feel about that? Because I feel like, what am I, two, three years older than Jessica? And I was 27, she was 24 when we got married. So that's kind of true. I mean, these are coming from reputable sources, by the way. Yeah, I got married young. <laughs> yeah, we got married young. Yeah. <laughs> you got married super I was young. just saying, yeah. that was really young. And, and the fact that y'all are still together today. But back then, Round of I, applause. I Hold on, don't let that go over nobody's head. 
shitting me. <laughs> I lived a life before that, though. No, that, I mean, but still, 27 years old for a, for a man, that is for really young. Man. For yeah. a for black, black man. Cause the, yeah. Cause our other, because our, our other brothers and sisters be getting married young than a mug. Right. Really young. And that's a lot of responsibility because not only are you taking on this woman, you have to take on a whole family. And for yeah. men, it's, it's, it's more of a, a duty than the woman because right. you're taking the financial burden because you're the lead, you're the head of the household. Yeah. So you have to do whatever you have to do to make sure that your family is taken care of. Yeah. Yes, the woman's place is to come in and take care, like if we went back to grandma and No, I Papa's mean, you know, yeah, but, but that's, a, that's, I mean, some people want that in their relationships. I wanted that. Yeah, I, some people want it. Yeah, I always, I always but, in my mind, when I got married, I wasn't, you know, I was going to be prepared to take care of everything and she yeah. stay at home. It's a great her. responsibility. Yeah. Right? For a man. So, I mean, I don't know how we got on your age, how old you got when you were married, but that's a I lot of responsibility. But yeah, didn't say nothing about my current we age. We were talking about, what were we talking about, the statistics? We were what just was talking it? about the ratio from men to women. Mm -hmm. and from like, men to women? Yeah. yeah because y'all choose us. We are the one that, that's chosen. So mm. unless a man choose you as a woman, then now, as nowadays wife. these women are proposed and I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that. But the man why? is just, why? I'm not getting on the knee and proposing to nobody, no okay. man. All right, moving on. No, no, no. We can stay there, because I'm not either. <laughs> okay, because that's, that's why I'm crazy. moving on, because I saw both of y'all doing knees, and I don't want no smoke, so I bust the gun to me. My <laughs> okay. pinky <toe>. So <laughs> Move so on. When, I don't even know okay. what my point is now. Okay, great. Well, let me give you some more stats. This pattern reverses at older ages, but likely for a different reason. The 55 and over age group had the lowest unmarried ratio with approximately 57 men per 100 women. This is likely driven by a shorter life expectancy for men than women, which produces mm. disproportionately uh, high counts of unmarried women at older ages Many who may be single simply because they outlived their spouse. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I believe that. So they're so they're widowed. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at the ratio, and the reason I want to bring up the ratio is because I think that we're looking at an average, right? Even in these, and this is not it. I didn't know any of this information until Tiffany got it for me. But I'm just looking at the the friend peer group, their ages, mm -hmm. indifference to their wives, and it's exactly <laughs> damn near. The same mm -hmm. as this. So it's running like three to four years older, if that, right? Then you look at like men being older, traditionally, if that is the case, the older person used to die first. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. just you don't know what what's out here killing us. Uh, people mm -hmm. drop like flies. But so I, you know, I, I don't know. I think that when I look at this generation, what makes me nervous most about the ratio thing is that they're not even proposing at all anymore it seems like and i don't know this because i'm not outside outside but my guesstimation would be like people are having more baby daddies and baby mamas than ever mm -hmm. they're having more open relationships trying things i have a significant mm -hmm. other we're gonna be true to this and that's what we're going but where is that leading society because i don't see any real productivity the hell in a handbasket ain't it though yeah, because people Im immediately, a lot of times people normalize the not not being married, right? right. Or they say it's just mm -hmm. a piece of paper, or they say this and that. But once right. you get older, who's going to take care of you? Especially our That's black what I don't men, because you are dying earlier, so you need to go on and get married so somebody will take care of you. Because at some point, you might not be able to take care of yourself. So it's not just a piece of paper. It's it is a covenant no, that you sure. want to enter into with somebody that you trust mm -hmm. and that you love enough that will take care of you at your lowest. Yeah. And I'm going to take I'm going to take care of whoever my person is, but I ain't got him yet and I'm 41. Right. Coco Kendra it Kendra. Sucks. Well, you could also look at that at a different angle. Even though you haven't been married yet, there are some people that have been married and may get divorced at 40 41 years old. So then they're starting over. So starting your life over mm. by yourself when you've been with your significant other for many years, that can be scary. It's, it would and be very. 
It would be, wouldn't it be for yeah, you though? Yeah, very much so. Like it's like, wait, and okay, I don't fuck with you this week, but I can get over it because if I leave your ass, <laughs> then I'm gonna have to take care of X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. Okay, hold on, let's fix it. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like that. It'd be like that. But nowadays and and forever, like it's easy for a man to remarry after a divorce mm. than a woman because again, the man is the one who chooses his woman, who well, chooses well, I, his mate. I agree, but then I disagree. If you take care of yourself, huh? You stay up on what what you love to do and have a skill set mm. outside of your marriage. I yeah. don't see how you can't boss right back up. If a man could do it. Well, you can, but that don't mean you're going to get a quality mate. It's a lot of men out here that bouncing it. Either they didn't got divorced and they like, shit, I'm living my best life. I'm about to Hmm. date uh, Keisha, Kenya, and and Kendra. (laughs) (laughs) You left out Coco. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You added a new name. I was trying. No, no, no. no. Coco don't date. (laughs) Okay, well, we we didn't know Keisha till today. (laughs) Clearly, this is Keisha. That's not on the Prosecco. Other names, y'all. Damn. You, that, was right. you, that was you, good. You, you that was good. But, but listen, though, to, to your point, though, Coco, Keisha, Kenya, Kendra, <laughs> it is amazing you say that because don't we all go through life in those friend groups where you know there's a friend in the group that's checking for you? And if you didn't, <sighs> no, no, let's keep it 100 now. You, you, you know there's people out there that you'd have had some type of interaction with that could have been inappropriate if you let it be. So people yeah. in relationships that are now not in relationships, how are you not revisiting those situations? I'm just curious, that's a question. So back in the day, Look at let me take it back, because this is, this is a true story. This is, this is story now back time. in the day, I'm back in the day, as a single woman, because you're you're still single until you marry, even yeah. though if I'm with someone, yeah. right? I had a little squad, you mm-hmm. know. I never dated a, a friend. number one though. and number two? What's that old song? <laughs> Boyfriend number two. Because oh. the first one, he don't really seem like he know what to do. Boyfriend number two. Yeah. Christ, so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I had a look, you know, there was always someone that I knew that okay, if this don't work, I'm going to call such such up. Oof. It ain't like that we was fooling around or doing anything. Well, you had to want, you, you had to undress him with your, your eyes. If, you, if you're making that statement, you had to see him naked in his clothes. All right. No, no, I didn't. No, no. I had male <laughs> friends that I have slept in the bed oh, with I, never even touched. Oh, I, no, nah, like Coco wouldn't have it. Friends. Coco wouldn't have it. Like, for real. Okay. Straight friends. Slept in the bed. Okay. And didn't do anything. All right. You but do. to your point, Use you do have people that you can call for a backup. All right. Nowadays, I don't have that privilege, but, you know. <gasps> so here's the thing. So I am a single woman currently, right? <laughs> Regardless of whether, you know, I'm talking to somebody or not, I'm single. Right. I'm not married. Um, so I you're saying you are talking with. to somebody. I'm just doing my notes. I want to be I clear. Did, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, not he I'm taking not, notes. Okay. I'm not. Right. I'm not saying I am. I'm not saying I'm not. Yeah. So here's the deal. Because you were talking I risky the to, other day. I tried to juggle three. Uh huh. It ain't for me. I am a one guy girl, and I know. Now, was you having sex like, with all three, or you were just juggling? What exactly so was you juggling? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, and I'm not. But what were you juggling? That because I- that has nothing to do with the conversation. <laughs> so anyway, just wanted to know what you were juggling. I mean, entertaining three different people, right? That's and, nine. And, and one of my homegirls, is- it does a really good job at it. Like she dates multiple people. She's great at juggling. I just can't. I, just forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop. I'm sorry, Sugar. Sugar, no, it was just, I said nine, it was six. All right, um, but she was good at juggling? She was good, and she's good at dating multiple people. I'm not. I put my all into whoever I'm talking to. Got it. And I know that that's not necessarily healthy for a person who is, uh, who I want to be married. Um, I don't like put an ultimatum out or anything, but that's what I want. So if I'm talking to you and I feel like it's something that I could put enough into, to see where it goes, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not, I cannot talk to multiple people. They be Xing themselves out though. That's right. the real deal. Right. I didn't have to X you out. You didn't give me enough attention, you out. Bye. Got it. I can't feel like I'm number two, whether I'm number two or not, whether you juggling people or not. Mm. Don't make me feel like you don't have time for me, because if you don't have time for me, I have zero time for you. 
TKBSF's big news for you. McDonald's dropping two new sauces, sweet and spicy jam and mumbo sauce. The kids can't wait. I can't eat it. That's right. It's time to take your flavor palette to sweet and spicy jam levels on that McGriddle with a side of hash browns or get in the pocket like go-go with the sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit dripping with mumbo sauce. Whatever you're going to do, you better do it quick because these amazing sauces are only available for a limited time at participating McDonald's. It's time to get saucy with sweet and spicy jam and mumbo sauce at McDonald's. If you like using debit over credit, don't you think it's time to get rewarded? Well, now you can with Discover Cashback Debit. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases, plus on all the things you've been contemplating for a really long time. So that concert, no brainer. Self-care, Yes, please. Do what you love and get cash back while you're doing it. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. Tough is in your DNA. It drives your resilience. Even when they told you you couldn't, you did what no one else could because you're different from the rest. Every day you work hard to conquer challenges, making the impossible happen. And tomorrow you'll do it all over again with a truck that's just as tough as you. Explore the best Ford truck for you today at Ford.com. Built Ford Tough. Bet you didn't know this. One in eight people have worked at McDonald's. That's right. They went to McDonald's for a job and found Found so much more that was too good to pass up. Like McDonald's online high school program, where over 82,000 people received access to education. And McDonald's archway to opportunity, where many have developed business and entrepreneurial skills. Think about it. With McDonald's, there's a lot of power in one in eight. One in eight have worked at McDonald's. And where you start stays with you. This episode is sponsored by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you know you're getting the real deal. Whether you're looking for a head-turning hand bag or a watch that says it all. Jewelry that makes you look like the gym or sneakers and streetwear that make every step feel fly. These days to know for sure you're getting the real deal, go straight to eBay. When you're searching, just look for that blue check mark. It will say authenticity guarantee. That means when you buy it, you can be confident that it's authenticated by real experts. It's nothing like getting something and knowing it's real. Listen, when you're finally ready to buy that thing you love, you have to make sure you're not going to catch a fake. Facts, they're everywhere. And it's really tough to tell the difference for yourself. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, that's easy. So again, look for the blue check mark. That way, when it hits your doorstep, not only do you know it's real, but the feeling you get when you put it on is also for real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. I want to ask y'all a question. Because I want to talk about what do we what do we really be arguing about in relationships? And this has everything to do with helping you know that the the little things you can really get over. I, and I want to just start cuz I I know that I will have an argument based on triggers, right? I never go uh-huh. into any relationship, let alone my marriage and try to be triggered. It's just things, you know, and I've said it here on the podcast. There's been many times where I was like, how are you going so hard? She would never like how, she could never. How could you even take it that way? That is your wife. What do you mean? That's not a regular in on the street. You, I, you caught you see how I caught that. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I, I try to tell myself these things, but they're just some triggers. It's like the shortness. You know, Jessica could, can be short and it'd be like, well, you're not gonna out petty me, huh? But then I try to catch oh my myself. God. No, 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 no. But but it's it's a natural yeah. reaction, and it's not even like I'm trying to be arguing at all. But it's like I get that you have it's your boundaries. Mechanism. You feel what I'm saying? I get that you have your boundaries, but I'm here to tell everybody it's really a breath away from being okay. Any argument you're about to get in to it with someone you actually really love mm-hmm. it's a breath away from being okay because the thing I'm learning is argue. some things ain't just worth the argument like right. it's just not worth it so, you can't it's like we talked about it the other day Kendra with kids you can't tell a kid how to feel they feel wholeheartedly the way they feel it's like you can't tell a, a grown adult uh-huh. even if they are not actual factual with the way that they feel as far as this particular situation that you are in together but sometimes you gotta bang and i know coco can you 
Keisha, Kendra, you got. Yeah, you did it. I didn't do it. You did it. Wait, Keisha is not staying, okay? Okay, we're going to do that, Keisha. Let's get. Okay. Ah! Keisha did but, it. Um, I did think, you say Keisha did what, it? What is, I just shot her. Keisha. I just shot her. It's gone. First time we used the gun for something. Um, what do we argue about? I think it's, it's boundaries with family. Yeah. Is a is a thing that married people argue about. Um, boundaries with the, each other mm. without going into any details of anything. So overall, for me, it's, it's hella boundaries since 2020. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but even for you, argument. though, but even for you, though, Kendra, like, aren't you like, I mean, because you're clearly in a different place, I'm just saying, but in, yes. in, in relationships, aren't we trying to get to the solve? See, I think a lot of our, our yeah. all of ours in the relationship, men and women, we want to win or we want to even be heard. Maybe not win. We just want to yeah. we want to be respected for our opinion. But even when we get that, I find that people boss up in relationships even more. It's like the more you feel accomplished in being and I'm not saying overbearing, but the more that you you are heard, the more you got to say. Right? And that's just mm. that's a fact of life in anything. Mm. In business, if you one day don't say nothing at work, then all of a sudden they heard your idea, they love the idea, they want to implement more. You know what I'm saying? You ask now, you wanna, now you want to talk. You you feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. shouldn't we shut the fuck up in relationships sometimes? Shouldn't we just shut the fuck up? Because if we shut yeah. the fuck up, it'd be a lot less drama. Sometimes. Now, I ain't sometimes. talking about the stuff you got to say. I'm just talking about the shit yeah. you want to say. That's what I was about to say. Sometimes. Because sometimes I do shut the fuck up because mm-hmm. I'm about to go there. Yeah. So I But have not to you, though. See, I don't want sh- you. This your therapy. Session. No, I'm, I'm not just talking saying. About- I'm saying. No, that's the truth. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I have to shut the fuck up. Yeah, you got it. To be able to, look, she you gave know, her mama to, look. I told you, boy. <laughs> to remove yourself from that situation right then and there, because now I'm not speaking with clarity, and yeah. now I'm speaking with emotion and anger. So I have to be quiet within that moment and come back when I had a chance to speak clearly. Mm, literally, this is this is one of the things that I tell these kids. These kids think that. They in relationships, y'all. They think they in real life relationships. They be like, Dr. E, can I come talk to you? I'm like, uh, sure. between classes, talk to me like that because you're not going to take no instruction or time to talk about your little fake relationship, okay? All right, so, well, so-and-so just broke up with me and I found out because so-and-so told me, I said, wait, you got to have clear communication with the person that you call yourself in a relationship with. Right. So don't start doing that now because it's going to be worse when you're an adult and you're actually in a relationship. Right. That leads me to this. If you have a problem with your significant other and something that they do, if you choose not mm. to communicate that, mm. it is going to come back up. Come on. Mm-hmm. I was in a relationship for a while and this person always forgot my birthday. What? That hurt me. Uh, that hurt me. Ooh. Uh, I mean, always. Hurt me to my core. I said the first time, hey, um, you didn't tell me happy birthday. You didn't. I don't need you to send me anything, but you didn't even. Right. You didn't even say nothing. The thought. So could you please put my birthday in your calendar right now? And I did not bring it back up. Yeah. Guess what? The next year, talk to them all day. That they, they didn't say happy birthday. And you were just waiting, like I I'm a, right. <laughs> you were just like I'm not gonna bring it back up because now this the ball is in your court. Right. You're choosing to not tell me happy birthday. I don't know if you got mm. a trigger around birthdays from childhood because you act weird around your birthday too Mm. so I'm like I don't know if it's a trigger so that's the other thing sometimes we are triggered and we don't realize that the things that trigger us are our triggers if you don't do that work you won't have a clue why you acting weird around my birthday and yours Mm. so I said if you if you not I mean we're human all right, so you you, you try to circle the block right Mm. Mm -hmm. this past year (laughs) yeah Hey, do you need me to send you my address just in case? Oh, no, I think I still got it. Okay, cool. All right, well, can you send it? Yeah. Guess what happened, y'all? Forgot again. You ain't getting nothing. Nothing on my birthday. Bye. You know, this, this, I can't is, this, is, this is love and hip-hop to me, though. Do, do, do you not, people, and to your point, maybe he did have baggage. 
It's got to be something from another you, thing. You're not gonna forget my birthday. You, you feel me? But but why do we continuously bring baggage to the love boat as we're about yeah. to shove off on a beautiful mission of love and adventure? Why would you bring unnecessary baggage to the table? We constantly, you know, what I'm saying, shooting ourselves in the foot before we can get started. And then we doing dumb stuff, y'all. Let's just talk about the dumb stuff that we are doing. We are giving the, y- y'all and them cookies, you need to keep the cookies in the jar, okay? <laughs> Ladies, keep the cookies in the jar. He can nibble on a cookie, he can, you know what I'm talking about, he can play with the cookie. Yeah. No, once he do all that, he going in the cookie. No, nah, but, 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 but see, this is the problem. This is the problem. Look at you, ain't nobody talking about your habits. <laughs> Coco Kenya Keisha Kendra Ain't nobody talking about you. We talking about literally People Y'all are giving it away Too quick See no, and, Oh I'm, no, I'm, I'm saying it I'm not saying you in, Generally Generally oh. Women are Giving it up Too quick <laughs> Because ladies and gentlemen Whatever you say About A woman Doing that And then things change If you don't think That's the truth You're sadly mistaken Now they could change For the better <laughs> But a lot of times they don't. And it's because you did not string him out. It's because you didn't leave him a trail to follow with certain acts of kindness. Remember my birthday. Mm -hmm. Certain things along the way that holds that man responsible. A man is going to do that. If you're going to give him the cookies off top, you got to reevaluate the majority of the time. I would say it's high 90 percentile. Unless... Mm. And I'm just speaking as a devil's advocate mm-hmm. because, you know, unless that's just what you're going for. If you're not going for a relationship, that's Facts. on you. And you Facts. do you. Yeah. But if you're going for a long term relationship, then you may need to evaluate what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. And, and that's all. You got to be strategic about all the things you choose. And, and why are you squinting the face like that? Faces of Kendra. But how's she going to be a hoe with randoms and then want to hold out for the one she wants? The like, whole goal is on. to not be a hoe. <laughs> Know that, but no, I'm no, no, saying, but, but I'm from saying what you said and from what Sugar said, it's like no. I, all I'm saying, ho- if you, if you, you can be all types of things in your relationship, whatever you want to be. You could be all. You could put strap-ons on. You do whatever freak oh, shit. Lord. But the point I'm trying to make is, at the end of the day, when you are dating someone that you think you could potentially have a life with, that you think you could potentially fall in love with, you have to set the pace. That gets you through the race. You cannot yeah. start out. Bars. Yeah, hello? You cannot right. start your yeah, you, you cannot start the relationship so hot and heavy that there's no foundation with all that heat, baby. You need a furnace to combust that heat. You need some air conditioning to control the flow. You know what I'm talking about? We building a house. We building a home. Yeah. You feel me? We not out here just because if that's what you want to Sugar's point, I suggest you set the table. We fucking, okay? <laughs> we fucking and listen. If I like it, we keep it going. If I don't, we make some adjustments. But everybody gonna be cool, all right? All right, hands in the pot. One, two, three, let's go. <laughs> I'm just saying, but we 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 have to be more realistic, or we can continue. Or we're gonna yeah. continue. I'm gonna say that one more time. We have to be more consistent, ladies and gentlemen, because if we don't. Mm-hmm. Without that consistency, we're gonna have more love and hip hop. I'm tired of the train wrecks. I'm honestly tired of the train wrecks because you rather a train wreck than something consistent. I'm curious. I think I think people like train wrecks because they don't Child. really want to. The only reason I say that is because they have not experienced true love, I hear you. and they don't they don't know how to accept or appreciate true love, so they are always gonna self sabotage. I had uh, I one you. of my homegirls that I used to work with. Literally, every dude she dated, while you know, while she was in the dating phase, she was like, it was just a mess. And then we met this. We look, we met this we. Dude, one dude, and I said, oh, he the one. She was like, well, I don't know. I said, girl, you're not gonna self sabotage this. And she's just like, but he doesn't do this. And I said, girl, stop. Yeah. Like you being silly. And now. Guess what? She's happily married because Hold on, round of applause for happily married. We don't have to, to self sabotage. We don't. don't have to. You don't have to nitpick and find something wrong with somebody that can be adjusted if you really need to adjust it. Yeah, and the same and shit. Some keep people are toxic. Yeah, some people are just yes, absolutely. This is also true. You're not toxic, are you, Keisha? No. <laughs>
because we <laughs> we just met you. I don't know. What to, no, but you know what? It's so crazy, y'all. He said. Listen, and this is why I called episode fifty five Love and Hip Hop. We, why? Have you ever talked to somebody? And you didn't really know about the person when you talk. It's like sitting in first class. You got somebody okay. sitting by you. You're on a six hour flight. You damn sure gonna talk to somebody at some point. And you might have looked at the person we first got on a plane. They got the wrong shit on. Oh, they, I don't know about that. They got the shoes off. Didn't fuck around. You talk to them, you like, damn, like you cool to the motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why don't we try to get to know people? I bet if we try to get to really know, I'm not talking about surface level. And this is where the cookie come back and play. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about surface level. I'm talking about actually get to know somebody. You mm-hmm. get to talking about some things you really like. Cause I'm gonna tell you one thing I do know, you have to be mentally stimulated to be in a relationship for a long time. Yeah, thank you very much. Like, you have to be stimulated, stimulated other than sexually, because the sex come and go mm-hmm. when you in a real mm-hmm. relationship, because you got things That's true. that just, uh, child, you be tired, and you just can't. Mm-hmm. Or your kids are got on your fucking nerves, and you want to go to sleep. I don't give a fuck if Many you butt things. naked or not, okay? <laughs> just don't put your leg on. Put your leg or your ass cheek on me or something. You know what I'm talking about? Back he's that up. Thing up. Yeah, he's up, and it's, it's going. Somebody come get me. Yeah, but the <laughs> The point I'm trying to make is Listen. get to know people, though. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, you and, gotta like them. Yeah, you got to like them. But no, but you got to define your love language. You cannot yeah. define, because guess what? The physical, I'm gonna bust your head, <laughs> literally, it comes and goes. And you don't have that same I'm gonna bust your head at the beginning that you do in the 27th year. It just. Oh, I thought you was talking about the other bust your head. Nope. 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 I didn't think we'd have to pray twice on this episode, but let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, baby Jesus, we're gonna help this new person, Keisha, find her way in with Coco, Kenya, and Kendra, okay, so that she can find her place and know when to come out and when to stay in. Amen. All right, but I just. I, I really want people to take heed to that though. Cause I think this generation of love and hip hop, she crying now. I don't think this generation of love and hip hop gets to know, Mm-mm. and I'm blessed. I am blessed and, and, I, and I know. Way up I feel blessed. You feel me? Way up I feel blessed. Go ahead with it. Way up I feel blessed. No, but I, I really do because even before my marriage, and I had several relationships before my, my marriage, I got to know the person. Mm-hmm. I always tell my partners, if I ain't meeting a mama, like I'm not gonna be, you know, and I don't I don't even know if I went through a slaying. No, I did. I went through a slaying part. Don't look at me like that, Tiff. I throw a phone at your motherfucking ass. You still over there on that thing. What word are you saying? Yeah, I don't know. Slay. Slay. You know, slayers. We he was slaying slaying. In everywhere. I said he slayer, did. not slanging. <laughs> Keisha, Keisha. <laughs> Who is this person? I'm saying though, but my point is, I used to tell my partners that if I can't meet the mama, if I can't get some direct action on growing up, because you know, it's, it's very hard prior to social media to be going through the thing, trying to dig, trying to find our relationships and friends. You know, y'all got a way better advantage on trying to get somebody information today than we did back then. But back then I'm trying to know somebody mama, I need no sister, somebody that's important to that person. And I'm getting to know this motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, to Sugar's point, at the end of the day, something happened to me, I wanna make sure I'm not being left on the ground bleeding. I'm making sure yeah. somebody calling out, somebody checking my welfare and where being at night. I want to know that I'm in a relationship with somebody that will sustain me. Yeah. But I think now people don't get to know people. Can I get a sister story time? I got I got one. Sister sister story time. Sister sister story time. My barber, Ron. Mm-hmm. He lives through me, y'all. That's my brother. You know what I'm saying? We we have real gospel ideation church, you know, therapy sessions when I go to the barber shop. You know, all the things you heard growing up, you go to the hair salon by that's what I have with my barber. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I'll be scrolling through the gram. And I don't follow some people in the past based on being at a party or being whatever. And some of them are female, okay? And one in particular today, I was scrolling. He's like, who that? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I, I met her in Toronto, I know that. And you know what I'm saying? I don't know what she do though. She be in Morocco, she be in 
you know, Mexico eating tacos. <laughs> she be places, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know what she do. But it's interesting because she be all over the world. Probably the reason I have an unfollow. He said, well, go on and scroll. Let me see the thing. I said, well, go on take the phone if you need a second, but I got to hurry up because I got to go tape something and I need you to, because you know when Ron get to look at this shit, he don't cut. You know what I'm talking about? I'm like, come on now. We got to be two and a half hours. We talking this shit. And I got a bald head and a beard. It ain't that hard. But anyway, so he looking through the phone. He be like, man, what's this picture right here? You see the way she looking at this picture? I'm like, nah, show me. He shows me and she look like a man without makeup. Oh my God. Now mind you, ladies and gentlemen, it was the angle. Clearly a woman. Because I seen her in person. But is she really a woman? I don't know. That's why I'm suggesting y'all to get to know these people now, cause you, cause you don't oh. know. Cause you don't know. That was juicy. Yeah, you like that, that story, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that face. Is that <laughs> Keisha's face or is it Coco Kenya Kendra? <laughs> Listen, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on today. But you, but you know what? I think some people don't want to get to know your family because that that gives them a level of accountability. That nah, they for want. real. Because you, if you meet my family, they're gonna take you in. Yeah. Like that's just who we are. Yeah. Because if you feel if you feel like okay, I'm getting too close to you, let me push you away. Yes. You really don't need to meet my family mm. because you ain't you. We don't. People be getting divorced in our family. We don't let them go. Like they ain't do uh, nothing to us. Yeah. Like I, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say too much because I'm gonna say too much if I say and too much. And then she gonna be watching it. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel like this, y'all, and I want to get to a place where we have something that we're walking away with after this episode. And when I think about hip hop, I think about the beginning of hip hop and our genuine love for this new form of music. And in those times, you know, don't push me, I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my edge. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. To, you know, it's like that. It's like that, and that's the way it is. Huh. Let's go through history, and then you get to N.W.A. Fuck the police. Fuck the police, coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it back, cause I'm brown. And you feeling that way because you getting abused on the block, hustling, trying to figure out your life. You know what I'm saying? Then you go mm -hmm. fast forward into, you know, let's come all the way up to the Biggie Small. It was all a dream. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Something pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. It was all visual and you loved it because you lived it. Yeah. yeah you yeah. loved it because it you lived it. it. We are in a world today where we don't really love the music. It inspires us in ways that are so negative that it's showing up in our relationships. Our relationships mm -hmm. for those who are single trying to find a significant other. Our relationships for people who are married and got to compete with whole rap right alongside other forms of things that are so distracting every time you cut on your phone. We are now in a world where we are being taught to hate the very thing that creates life. Black men are being taught to hate women. Women are uh. being taught to hate men. You know, uh -huh. we have distinct roles by God, not by man. We have distinct uh -huh. roles. We are better at certain things than others. And you trying to take on certain roles that you're not comfortable with shows in your life. It shows in your life. So as we get to this, you know, love and hip hop, you know, remedy portion of the show, because I truly think I have a remedy. And the remedy is number one. Get to know somebody before you give them your body. Yes. Get to know somebody before That's you real. give them your body. Number two, if we had any guidance in our life, we got to tap back into that guidance. Whether it is your parentals, whether it is yeah. your church, whether it is your peer group, stop being afraid and I'm not talking about them hating ass friends that don't want to see you happy. I'm talking about the no, ones who generally have been your village. We just uh -huh. talked about it last episode. If we do not have people to tap into, we need to find them. Uh, number three, we got to get into a routine on teaching people how to treat us. Yes. We have to get into a routine. This shows up in every aspect of your life. This shows yes. up in every aspect of your life. I was talking to Jessica today. It was like, okay, cool. I'm a little bit more stern when it comes to business. Just a little bit more. All right, let me know. Uh, you need to add some of your, your husband into your game. That's why I'm here. Just like I've had to mm -hmm. add so much of my wife into my game. So yeah. number four, ladies Balance. and gentlemen, and I want y'all to give four and five individually 
Um, let's start with you, Sugar, because I think there are things that you have that are so necessary for someone to hear. So I honestly, I honestly feel like it's very important to communicate clear and open expectations about what you expect from someone else and what Off they top. expect from you. Off and if top. they don't have anything that they are expecting from you, they don't have anything to offer. Woo! I need to know what you need from me because I can't give you what I need because your needs aren't the same as mine. Yes. I need to be in constant, not constant, but consistent communication with the people that mm. I love. I don't have to talk to you mm -hmm. all day, every day, but I need some consistency about it. Like, I need to know what's going on, not because I'm trying to check for you. Yes. Just because I, if I have love for you and I love you, I need to make sure that you're good. Like, right. me and Kendra and Ebony, baby, if we don't do nothing else, we send each other them flight That's information. Right. That's right. <laughs> they know where I am. Yeah. Like, and then mm -hmm. if, if I'm talking to a dude and we got a whole volley going or whatever, we talk, we texting all day, and then I don't hear from you for hours, I don't like that. Yeah. Because that means you you switching up something. Yeah. And it's okay if you doing something, but just let me know. Let hey, me know. Just let me know. And I'm not trying to check for you because you're not mine, but let me know. Let me know. And mm -hmm. I might just check. Hello? Clear communication. Clear yeah, communication. I love that. So, so Coco, Kendra, Kenya, we're going to leave Keisha out of this one. <laughs> Um, okay. Bring us home with number five, baby. And number five, you should be realistic Woo! with what you want from your partner. Mm -hmm. Don't yep. throw something out of the atmosphere mm. of what you see, what's on, on the gram, what's on. on Facebook, what your friend is getting from her Come man, on. because that's not the same man. That ain't your man. What do you want from your significant other? Mm. My, man, my, man, my man, my man, my man. yourself as well, because what you're asking, you're gonna have to give as well. Ooh. It's a two-way yep. street. Ooh. Yeah, what you're asking, what you're asking, you're gonna have to give as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this was a great therapy session. I think you got some <laughs> census information, huh? You got some yes. information on ratio. So no, you're not tripping. It is lopsided. You know, men are normally older, women are usually younger. It is lopsided. Women usually outlast men in relationship. I mean, all the things you feel, and this is something that Jessica tells me all the time. She listens to church every week and then comes and tells me, you know what? He was saying something that you practice every day. You know what? He was saying something you say all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, what you feel in your spirit is real. You might have uh -huh. to flush it out and see if it applies to you, but what you feeling is real. It could be around you, not on you now. I want you to let that go over your head now. So what you feeling could be real. Might not be yours to bear or yours to carry, but what you feeling has meaning somewhere in your, in your personal being or your village. So I want you to not ignore that in the census status and these things that we bring y'all as, as far as factual actuals. Come on now, come on yeah. now. So I, I, mm -hmm. wanna, I wanna lead this by saying, you don't have to be caught up in this love and hip hop spin cycle. Relieve yourself, I say it all the time. People on this hamster wheel don't even see the two sides are open. Come on, bust a move, get on, and get some, you feel me? I'm not talking about some like Keisha was talking about earlier with dangling and swinging and all that. I'm talking about <laughs> get you a real relationship, okay? And anything y'all want to tell the nation before we leave, ladies? Because he's going to go. It's time to go. It's time I to go. I did enough today. All right. Um, on the count of three, lead us up out of here, Coco Kenya Kendra. One, two, three. The, the dream, dream is <laughs> real. Yeah. The, 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 the dream is real.